if I can draw a really rough drawing. So that's the curvature. If you measure a point here and here, using the ellipsoid, that will be your distance that you measure. But we have the MGA 2020 projection, which basically converts the Earth's surface into a, a flat surface. Hello, welcome to the show. I'm Harry McPherson Wood, and today we're going to understand a little bit better how GPS works and why uh, it might differ. As a surveyor, we would often talk about how it differs when you measure with GPS to measuring on the ground. Uh, before we jump into it, we'll go through a few terms. Often, uh, some of these words are interchangeable, but they often mean the same thing. So if someone mentions GPS, or GNSS, uh, essentially it is the same thing these days. Uh, GPS is the uh, United States version of satellites in the sky. There are other countries that have their own satellites too and the whole system put together is the GNSS system, which is Global Navigation Satellite System. So often these days uh, surveyors will use uh, their GPS on site and we'll be using all of those satellites in the sky, not just from GPS, but from all the other countries as well that have their own satellites up there to receive these corrections. Uh, so uh, a lot of the time, especially in Australia, people will use the term GPS, but often uh, it is GNSS that they are using, but GPS is part of it. Basically, it, it means the same thing. They, they're getting a position located on site on Earth by some satellites and uh, they just happen to be GPS or GNSS. Either way, you can do either either or both. Uh, but yeah, the words often are interchangeable, especially when talking to people on site, trying to simplify things. Um, you can interchange this, but GPS is probably more commonly known in Australia. Otherwise, um, other terms that help understand what we are talking about when we use GPS are ellipsoid. Uh, so what GPS does, uh, the satellites floating around the Earth measure a position of your rover that you have on site or your GPS unit. And what uh, they pinpoint is a XYZ coordinate. And from there, uh, we need to try and understand whereabouts that fits on the Earth. So uh, smart mathematicians have created uh, mathematical formulas to calculate basically a sphere of the Earth. And it's uh, the sphere at the mean sea level. And what, it, what, what this ellipsoid is what they're creating, a mathematical formula of an approximation of the Earth's surface. So it varies all over the world. There's different densities of the Earth. Uh, depending on where you are, and uh, an ellipsoid that uh, smart people have made for Australia is the GDA 2020 ellipsoid. And what this is, is a mathematical formula calculating uh, the mean sea level of uh, the Earth's surface in Australia. So it's the best calculation of the, uh, the Earth's surface. And while it's not perfect, it's pretty, pretty close. And uh, what they're trying to calculate is the geoid in Australia. So that's another term that might be a bit confusing. Uh, the word geoid, basically geoid is trying to say that uh, that's the Earth's surface. And the ellipsoid is trying to uh, have a formula for that geoid. So when you often uh, are working on the site, um, what you are doing is using the ellipsoid, the GDA 2020 ellipsoid in Australia, um, to find your position in Australia. And um, if it's over very large distances, uh, the GDA 2020, it's a curved surface, so it doesn't take into consideration any 
uh, the smaller sites where you're measuring, uh, getting those differences with a tape measure to what you're measuring with the GPS because it's all curved lines. It doesn't take into consideration the straight, uh, like the, the slope distance between two points. But uh, if you are on a specific site that's a little bit more smaller scale, which is typically uh, your normal construction site, a few kilometers to a few hundred meters in size. Um, this is where often, particularly as surveyors, we need to be measuring uh, ground distances. And that's another term uh, we often talk about ground or grid. And uh, ground distance is basically what you measure on the ground. So if you pull out a tape measure and measure between two points, uh, that's the ground distance between those two points is what you measure with the tape measure. And the GPS will not measure that unless you convert for it. Uh, so what, uh, and what you will do is you're using the GDA 2020 ellipsoid, which is a curved surface. From there, you're converting that curve into a flat surface, which is the MGA 2020 um, uh, projection. And this is basically converting curved surfaces into flat surfaces. And to help explain this, uh, I've just got on my screen here uh, a, a rough a picture I've got from the ICSM website. A little bit confusing, but uh, it tries. What we're mostly interested in is the ellipsoid distance. Uh, often, geo at an ellipsoid, those distances are very small, so it's um, not so much something that we're going to go down today to look into, but for, for this example, we'll just assume they're the same, so there's no difference. And uh, what we're doing is trying to understand when you uh, convert from a curved surface to a flat surface, so not considering the Earth's curvature, what we're trying to do is, yeah, when you're measuring with a tape measure, you're not factoring in that curved surface and it usually over small distances that uh, that doesn't really have much of an impact depending on where you are that some areas have more of a, an impact but uh, distance is less than 100 meters the difference is often uh, very minimal if you're going larger than that uh, what you measure with the GPS will not reflect what the tape measure says on the ground and part of this is, if I can draw a really rough drawing, that's the curvature. If you measure a point here and here, using the ellipsoid, that will be your distance that you measure. But we have the MGA 2020 projection, which basically converts the Earth's surface into a, a flat surface to try and closer approximate to, uh, or to convert everything to a flat surface. So you will now measure with the GPS using MGA 2020 a grid distance, which is this distance here. However, this distance is not reflecting what is shown with the tape measure on site. So often it's close, but uh, it does not exactly match. So this distance here is what surveyors will often term as a grid distance. However, if you pull out a tape measure, you will not measure uh, the same number than you would with GPS. So what we need to do is convert from grid to ground, which ground is the basically what you'll measure on the ground if you pull out a tape measure. And depending on where you are, there are scale factors to apply. And that just depends on uh, which part of the, the projection on MGA 2020 you are and how close you are to the scale factor of one or uh, in between that. And to find what the scale factor is, 
Uh, you'll need to go to uh, certain websites depending on the state you're in. In New South Wales, it's six maps, and you can then find a, a scale factor to convert from grid to ground. Uh, also the same in Victoria, you can go to Lassie, Spear or SMES and uh, find the published survey marks nearby your site, which will give you that scale factor conversion rate. Uh, in areas closer to Melbourne and Sydney, the scale factor approaches the one, so the, the grid and ground distances uh, are approaching almost the same and in between that it uh, gets a bit worse and that's heading up north south but um, doesn't matter where you are still considering in that scale factor is important so how do you consider it uh, or find where that scale factor is and know what to convert uh, best thing to do is speak to a surveyor to get them to help you with this and they will be able to explain it uh, possibly do site calibrations to your site to help scale everything from grid to ground or to the site datum and if the site datum is on grid then the surveyor can either convert everything to ground for you or they can work off grid and for the surveying part of it can they can focus the, for themselves to stay on ground. Uh, ground is important because everything to do with your property boundaries is as you would expect when you pull out a tape measure you should be able to um, measure what your tidal boundaries say. So tidal boundaries and distances relating to that are all on ground as is your tape measure as well. Uh, the only thing that's on grid is GPS, but because it's so common these days and uh, some people don't properly understand these two differences, uh, some sites can be uh, set up on a grid projection. Uh, so that's another thing to check before you start construction or any works on site to make sure that you know, your datum is on ground, not grid. So how do you convert from grid to ground? Uh, the best way to do this is get a surveyor to measure the published survey marks all around your site. Uh, they will measure up these survey marks. Uh, they'll have that scale factor to convert based on the published survey marks. Convert all of those points so they post-process these points to then scale it to fit onto ground. And then all the other points and the, the surfaces and everything are based on this, what we call a survey control. So then it has, have as your site uh, control points. And often these are, uh, we might call them TBMs on plans where it shows a, an easting, northing, and an RL. And uh, provide these to engineers to design their surface based on these points. Uh, often this will include a a feature survey or a detail survey of uh, the construction site before construction so it'll be the, the 3d model of the site and then from there engineers can design uh, what the the future site is going to look like and then send back these models for earth moving equipment to upload or the relevant uh, people to upload into their rovers and then start construction so once this conversion is made before all the design works and everything are done uh, that's the important part about getting the site set up properly and uh, getting it off that grid system onto a ground system and which then allows for a, a lot more smoother straightforward process but uh, for the contractors on site what they need to do is make sure that their GPS units are uh, localized to that site datum. So often if you just turn on your GPS, put it on the correct uh, datum, which might be MGA 2020, often because the scale factor from grid to ground has been applied, uh, you will be working on a grid datum if you just turn on your GPS and start working and it's not 
considering in that scale factor or localization of that site. So what you need to do is receive a localization file, often done by uh, the surveyor on site or a contractor to help work with uh, getting all the units set up. And you will receive a uh, control points as well as checks and a localization file. Um, and this can be done for different types of uh, units or different brands of uh, rovers. But yeah, you need to upload this localization file. Uh, the surveyor will, will do their own localization and then send this to the contractors to then upload as part of their, um, one of their files that they need to include. And as a contractor, what you need to be doing is checking onto these survey control marks or TBM temporary benchmarks on site and checking for horizontal differences and vertical differences. Uh, it's really important to check these every day, more than once a day, probably at least once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Ideally, probably do one at lunch as well and checking not just one mark, uh, several marks at complete ends of the site just to make sure because GPS corrections change all the time uh, just to make sure that the accuracies that you're measuring or the differences that you're measuring uh, with your rover compared to the coordinated marks that the surveyors uh, determined they need to line up within a, the certain tolerances that you're expecting to get so, and if you're unsure on if one of the marks might be out, uh, what you need to do is prove that it's out. So go to other marks and um, determine that they are suitable and the, this one is out. Or maybe your whole, your whole site calibration is a little bit skewed. Uh, it's going to happen over time or certain parts of the days, depending on your satellite corrections. Uh, there are many different factors that can input into inaccuracy with GPS uh, because it's such a large distance measuring system uh, GPS isn't quite uh, accurate as accurate as a total station yet uh, so there are always shifts especially during the day when you may start in the morning and you might get perfect um, measurements to the the TBMs on site and you get to lunchtime and it may have shifted a little bit and then it may shift back in the afternoon or it might go the other way around. It might get worse as long as you can notice those shifts during the day and uh, those tolerances are within what you expect. Um, if you are after really tight tolerances, then maybe you need to be looking into total station measurements rather than GPS um, to help tighten up those discrepancies. Otherwise, uh, the best thing to do is to speak to a surveyor and they can help uh, guide you in what the most appropriate way of uh, completing construction is on site. And they can help you out, uh, particularly with uh, that grid and ground distances, uh, differences uh, with those distances to help try and understand how this system works and getting your rovers set up properly. If any of this is a little bit confusing to you and you want to clarify something, please send a message through. I'll be happy to help out where I can. And uh, if you have any other questions, yeah, please leave a message in the comments below and I'll reach out to you. Thanks for tuning in and we'll speak to you next time.